everybody. So we got a walk-in freezer and I've never worked on this unit before. This is an old ass unit, but it's a new one to me. All right, it just shut off. Oh, there's a lot of exposed crap over there. Uh, it's going into defrost right now, which is fine. I need to get rid of that ice. So, let's see what's going on here. I can tell what's going on. I'm gonna have to get my bubbles for that. All right, should be an easy one. I don't think I'm gonna do much else to it. I just wanna, well, there's oil over here too. start leak checking the obvious all right so I forgot my spray bottle somewhere and I didn't pick one up today so my backup is the brush on we're gonna kick it out see what pressure we get we got around 20 and dropping Going back up. We must have a uh, fan cycle switches. Unless those are not working, but we'll see right now. Let's we'll see if they come on while I leak test this part. Yeah, one fan came on. Alright, so no roll hits with the bubbles. This is kind of dried out, so I don't know if it's oil or not, or how long it's been there, but this service port, I'm not a big fan of when they have it like this. This side over here is uh, open all the time, so that could have leaked out slowly over time. Uh, I've never liked when they're not used Usually you have a pressure control hooked up to it or something like that. Uh, if we don't use a pressure control on it, I'd rather use a single or one with a Schrader uh, core in it so that it doesn't leak out. So I'm not a fan of these if you're not gonna use them, uh, the port, the open port. So I'm gonna hook up and we'll see if I can even charge this. I might have to get my gauges because I can't fit anything right here it's like right up against this other pipe uh probably charge it up check again with bubbles and i might just cut this accumulator out because this is our receiver over here so obviously we need that for uh storage in winter time this uh we don't really have accumulators here it's just to prevent liquid from going back but if it's charged correctly i don't see an issue we have fan cycle controls over there. So overall, this thing is pretty efficient for what it is. And that way I can repipe this 
a different way. It's kind of a weird layout. So we'll repipe it to go straight and then just put a service port, like a T, to tap in. And that will probably be better than this. This was rusted out too. I don't know if we're going to change that. Maybe I'd recommend it. But if not, just at least take this out. And I don't have a leak, electronic leak detector right now. I busted mine. So I can't check with the, with that one, I can't sniff it out, but this is the only spot that looked like it had oil. It's a little bit here too, but I'm not getting a hit. So we'll charge it up and then check again, see if we get another hit. If I don't get any hits, I might recommend what I said and maybe a, we'll do a pressure test to do a, a better leak test on this. Because right now they need it working. They have their food is still frozen, but they need it running already. I don't want to leave them without a freezer for a uh, long time. So let's see if we can get this going. I don't know how, but I managed to get it in there. So let's start charging. I was getting a little worried, but that second fan finally came on, so there's no issue there. It's just gonna be a low charge leak. Unfortunately, it's a Friday. It's getting, it's gonna get late. I'm out of town for this call because we're over an hour away. So it's better for me to top it off and then come back next week and do our leak check. If I get approved for all this, because that's another issue, is getting approved. Uh, to cut this out or redo this, I will show you guys how I repipe this and then how I do the leak test and all that. So we'll see if that gets uh, approved quickly so I can do that already. It's clear, it needed about a pound. Now, the only thing is, this is starting to ice up, so I need to go downstairs and see what's going on. I didn't add that much. So I went outside and I noticed this thing was at 30 and then I heard a click from the solenoid. So I was like, don't tell me this thing is off. And what do you know? Why was it like that? Alright, so now I'm not even sure if we had a leak or anything. We topped it off to clear the side glass. It looked like there was oil, but I didn't get a hit. So what I want to do just to be sure to be safe is we're gonna pump the unit down into the receiver, get all the refrigerant in there. And I'm gonna warm it up, check the level and mark it. That way if I follow up, uh, we can come and just do this again and see if the level is the same, down, and if we have a leak that way because at the moment I'm not seeing anything and I think their main issue was the thermostat. I should have checked that first, but like I said, we're trying to clear the side glass, get the high side up because it was kind of low. And um, right now it's cooling really well. So this was a hard one to see uh, with the thermal imager. I basically just kind of went by feel instead. So it was, uh, warm ish where I can kind of like leave my hand there and as soon as I got over here it was burning hot so I couldn't uh, leave my finger there so that's where I marked it that's where we should be and uh, that way I'll know next time if we come back and I do the same thing and if I don't feel that that uh, liquid line there then we lost the charge and we got to do or we got to We'll have a better idea of how big that leak is. But I'm more than sure something's going on with these service valves uh, over here and over here. I don't know if there's fires going on or something, but I'm having to take the worst road to go around a blocked highway to get where I need to because I don't want to come back tomorrow, Saturday.
So it's really hot. That area that was on fire, basically, uh, they had a fence and the fence was already, the little logs holding the fence were like deteriorating. They were all uh, burnt up and uh, it was a bunch of ash. I don't know, it's really hot and dry and it's really windy. Um, it's been really windy for the past like two days. So that's not good with, when a fire uh, starts or breaks out, so. Finally made it to where I'm at. We installed a um, a new evaporator coil, Intelligen. You guys have seen me make videos on them before. And basically, uh, we've been really busy. So we put this in and I went to wire it up the way I'm used to wiring up uh, old mechanical ones. And I thought I was, I was looking at the uh, schematic right but I wasn't so then I was just like whatever let me just jump out the power because when I turned it on the heaters came on but not the controller so then I, I jumped out the power that was feeding the heaters to the controller instead or the transformer and I got it going just so I could run it and come back the only issue is that I had that other call for the freezer that came in emergency uh, in the morning so I it took me a while to get here so it's probably gonna be iced up didn't plan to be gone that long uh, or letting it run that long uh, we're gonna just I'm more than sure I know how to wire it it kind of clicked in my head after after the fact after I left and it was just a stupid mistake so we're gonna wire it up and we're gonna put it in defrost it should work and then kick it out and then leave uh, we were done with this install basically I just knew I had to come back because it was going to ice up eventually because um, the heaters, I took the power from the heaters. So I completely wired this wrong. We don't need all these wires and I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so basically I was wiring this in because they were keeping the same condensing unit. I thought I still had to wire the timer. Intelligent is its own controller it does its own thing so i haven't tried it yet but i thought about it and i'm like wait i need to unplug all of these wires and get rid of all these and just wire it up basically from the contactor uh the power that i need to feed the controller and then the controller should do all the switching for defrost and on and off and everything the condensing unit the condensing unit will turn on and off via pressure switches and that's it i don't know why i was wiring it up the other way uh basically i had seen like uh a terminal board with all the wires and i just you know habit put all the wires back because it's labeled the same x three four n all that but i was screwing that up so right now all we're gonna do is gonna take off the terminals like i said we're gonna unplug and not have this uh, timer do anything anymore so I need to take all these off and only hook up my L1 and L2 now I can leave them here because they are going to the timer and then back down but I'll par probably uh, wire nut them or something so I can completely unplug this controller or this timer All right, so basically, basically they're all disconnected. Uh, downstairs, they're not going to anything either, so I'll cap them off downstairs. I will leave the connectors on here just in case, and then we wire nutted these to the contactor. Now, our quote did not include any repairs up here, so I need to recommend the contactor. I think I heard a little bit of shattering there. Uh, it does not come on, and I'm sure if I take it apart, it's gonna be super pitted. So we'll recommend that, but for now they just wanted the evaporator. So just gotta make sure that that's working good. I'm trying to put it in manual. This thing isn't 
click anymore. What the hell? Alright, I think I broke the ice it had. See if it works. So everything's on, it'll defrost now. Just made a stupid mistake. So we can cap these off. And it was right in front of me. Line here on H2 and line here on J. I did have to make a little jumper, or not jumper, but the little spade connector that gives you more connections because they were all full and I didn't want to put it on the screw. It didn't really reach that well. So, I don't know, that was another thing. Jay was filled up and I'm like, there's nothing that goes there. But I made that extra connection there. So it's just there and there. And then the controller will take care of everything else. I was just so used to hooking up all my wires to these uh, numbers and, you know, I spaced out and uh, I did call Heatcraft because they gave me an error uh, yesterday when I first turned it back on. I also made a mistake in the uh, setup because it goes through and it'll, it'll ask you the time, uh, where you're at, the, you know, like if it's a cooler or freezer, stuff like that. And I accidentally, or not accidentally, I. I put it in a con condenser wired. It'll ask you, is it wired to a condenser? And you put yes or no. I put yes, because I was like, I'm gonna hook up my, my defrost terminals at least, even if I take off the pins or whatever. But I was gonna leave it wired up the same because we're just changing out the evaporator and not the condenser. So I got an error and the, the heat craft, uh, they wouldn't answer, I got it hung up on me. Then I didn't get an answer. I did leave my info. I never got a call back, but I did get a text from the guy. So, you know, thanks to him for texting me. I think he, he texted me from his personal number that he was on the line with another tech. But if I gave him like my info that, uh, and like what error I got that he could uh, try and help me out. So I told him it was an error. Uh, I think it was like E11. And it said circuit open. And I just told him, I just need to know what that means. Cause when, like, if you tell me more or less what I'm missing or whatever, I can probably figure it out. And then he's like, well, if you have your manual, you know, turn to page uh, 22. And then he's like, look at step number six. And that step was asking the condensing unit wired, uh, yes or no. And I was like, oh, don't tell me I put the wrong one. So I was like, let me try switching it real quick. I switched it and then it turned on. So that was one issue I had. Uh, tech support came through through text to help me out with that one. And that was one issue. I'm still getting used to the IntelliGen, but I just thought, cause I had all those wires that it was considered wired. But unless you have a um, board in the condenser, now we don't have those I've been doing a lot of um, either this where they just want the evaporator to their old condenser or if they get top and bottom like a whole system change out we just put in a, a generic condenser that they have right so it's gonna be like your normal um, I don't even think we have scrolls yet it's gonna be a normal like uh, hermetically sealed compressor with a bunch of pressure switches and we don't have to put the timer in because the uh, evaporator has a, a defrost control. So normally we put those or we use the same condenser. So he was telling, I think he told me, unless you have the board, um, which I haven't run into on the condenser, it's always gonna be no for condenser wired. Is, your conden is it hooked up or is it wired to a condenser? It's always no because they're kind of separate. Your evaporator has its own controller 
it controls the heaters like on this one it controls the heaters it'll control uh, defrost if it's air defrost as well it'll control the fan speed uh, it'll control you know the unit cycling on and off because it's going to close the exv which is also your solenoid valve it's a two in one on these so once it closes it all the way of course you have pressure switches on your condenser that once you don't have enough pressure your condensing unit shuts off and that's why it's it's independent because you don't need to have wires running back and forth unless you have some sort of communication like i said between boards or something if you have something electronic on your condenser but like i said i haven't run into those yet so i don't know what what wired would be considered but yeah he just basically told me if it's if the controller's on top it's wired if it's if there's uh if you're just wiring it to the contactor it's a no it's not wired to the condenser so that was my mistake i'm still figuring that out all right so we're defrosted enough we're gonna get this out it might already be kicking out okay it's on delay it's already doing its thing so we're on a delay let's go home yeah i can hear the compressor came on so it's going to do the fan delay right now So it's getting late. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, everything's working. I just made some mistakes there. And if any of y'all, a lot, a lot of you guys message me about uh, IntelliGen. So if it helps anybody, I don't know if anybody else makes the same mistake that I did, or just is not familiar with it. Now you know how to kind of set them up and wire them. IntelliGen, you're just giving the board or the transformer, uh, the, the voltage, whatever you need, like this one is 208. Uh, I think most of them are. Uh, or 120, depends on what you need. So you're just giving the board uh, the power to do everything. On a walk-in cooler, you don't have a defrost clock usually or anything like that to worry about. So it's just straightforward, you wire in your, your voltage and that's it. On a freezer, you have wires because you have a timer that goes and communicates back and forth with like your solenoid and thermostat. You don't need any of that. So that's why we took them out. I didn't think about it the last time. So did that today and I took care of that. And <laughs> you know, the funny thing is Heatcraft actually emailed me and it had nothing to do with my videos. I don't, I don't think, but they, seemed so excited and they uh in their header they put uh something like ready to make some content or create content with an exclamation and then i read the message and it, they sounded super excited and stuff i replied and they were like cool that they'll keep in touch or whatever i wasn't sure i'm still not sure what it was about um and i didn't hear back from them i emailed them like as a follow-up uh just to see what, what they were thinking about doing. And uh, like, what was up? Cause I hadn't heard from them. Well, they were like, uh, yeah, that they've been busy with other projects, but they're still super excited to work with me and that they'll keep in touch. I haven't heard anything from them in months. Uh, this was like late last year, I think. This was around the time that I, that I started working with like uh, Phil Peace and Jobber. Um, so I still wasn't super sure how to how these worked. So they would have been one of the first people that I worked with, but they never came through. I don't know what happened to them. It may or may not have had something to do with uh, my videos on their product. Maybe uh, me showing the issues that I had with them. Maybe they got scared off or something. I don't know. It would have been really cool to work with them and work through these problems because 
like I said, a lot of you guys have messaged me about uh, issues you guys have had with this new product, Intelligent uh, by Heatcraft. So it would have been cool to hear from them, see what they thought. And I don't know, I don't know what they wanted to work on, but I guess we'll never know. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Got a couple of things going on and um, you know, Sometimes you get ahead of yourself, make mistakes, you don't read something right. And uh, electrical is probably one of my weak points. So that's something that always I'm always working on. And you can only improve on your mistakes and after every call. So like I said, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys.